Proverbs chapter number 24, verses 30. I went by the field of the slothful. Solomon writing Proverbs, and he's writing not a poem. He's writing from experience. It's something he's seen. He says, I went by the field of the slothful. Someone's sleepy. Someone doesn't do nothing. And by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. Someone who, who has a vineyard and doesn't know anything about it. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns. The curse of Genesis 3. And you realize thorns is that plant that is... Its fruit is, is something that hurts the skin, I guess. You can say if you want to call it a fruit. And there's no good of it. You just you break it up and cut it up and throw it into a fire and it pops. And nettles and covers the face thereof. And the stone wall thereof was broken down. And you wouldn't think that, well, here's a stone wall that would be, you know, you would, it would remain. And throughout all New England, you'll see that it, here's these woods and all that, and there's stone walls. Which at one time they were built straight, proper, with a little dedication, and with wind, rain, snow, weather, animals, it gets broken down. You need to tend to the walls. You need to tend to your landing, you need not to sleep. Then I saw, so he's looking at it, he, he stopped and he saw. And it's the results of slothfulness. He's looking by at this land and he's just taking in what it is. There's nothing there that is of any value. That was once a vineyard or a field. And consider it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Here's the instruction he got. He had a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So, what he's saying is that this field, this vineyard, everything that is in destruction did not happen overnight. It took time. It took what we call today a snooze alarm. No repair, no care, no work. And the curse of Genesis 3 will come upon instead of fruit. Listen, work was not the result of the curse, the work of the, of the field especially. The work of the husbandman was given to man before the fall. And his wife was given to be a help me in the garden. Now, I don't know what Adam would have to have done in a perfect garden. There are certainly no weeds or nettles or thorns. But that was his job given to him. And then to his wife. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. And when you get a feud like this, Solomon says, listen, the cause of it is because sleep. I, I want a little more sleep. I don't want to get up early in the morning. And that's not what's happening in America today. You don't rise up with the chickens. You don't milk the cows no more. Your livelihood does not depend upon what you do with the fields. You go down to the grocery store. And you pay the outrageous price. But that's a lot of hard work. And that's a hard work that you will have to do that there will be no miller time at night. There would be no time of, I'm bored, let's go to the city and let's, you know, paint the town red. 
Now, I don't know. I never grew up on a farm. I never grew up with those things. But I can imagine if you get up at the crack of dawn and start with the chickens and work your way to the barn needs to be fixed and you got to till your own ground and prepare for your own fruit. All right, even if you did do business, it was a barber kind of business where you traded what you came from your field for the corn on the cob or the wheat that you need or the, the needs for your animals. I mean, you would have to take a part of your land, what you got out of the ground, to buy the pig that you would have to fatten up and take care of so you can have bacon and pork when it's time. And what happens is when you get that little sleep, the work's not being done. Now, if you want to see this illustration come to pass, you have me start a garden. I'll go into that garden full force and you know, I'll start it off. I'll break up the ground. I'll plant the seeds. I'll water it. And the little weeds will come in. I'll pull those weeds and then I'll do it tomorrow. And then I'll do it tomorrow. And when I go looking for fruit and I've got weeds that are taller than the plants, I don't get all the full benefits of that garden. I get benefits, but not the full benefits had I kept to it. And that's what Solomon's talking about. Before you know it, the weeds will, will overpower, and then what are you going to do? It's a lot more work than you had to work in the beginning, I guess. And I wanted to break down this part of the section. This is going to be a, 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 probably a short night, but Solomon says this is because of a slothful man. I want to add to him what I've seen, if I may. And I'm no better than Solomon. And as I walked through New England and grew up in New England and in the woods thereof, and you see walls, stone walls, and you know where those stone walls came from? When a flower, when a flower, when a farmer would plow the ground. In New England, we grew rocks. Every year he would plow the same ground, he'd come up with more rocks. Those rocks that he came up off the ground, he would take and he would gather them up and he would build his wall from the rocks that he got from his ground and all the way around. That's where those walls came from. They came from the ground that he took and they would put up to be, this is my land, that's your land. This is to keep the cows in. This is to keep the pigs from the ki chickens and, the, you know, whatever you have for animals. And you go walking around and you'll see this land and there's no cleared land. It's filled with trees. There's no animals being penned. They're just stone walls that are broken, untended, uncared for. Why? Maybe because, like Solomon said, which is which is totally true, someone slept. I'll tell you another reason why. There's a couple reasons. The old man died without any male children. When he died, he, he left a widow, maybe a, maybe daughters or something like that, and this eventually made the land had to be sold for bills and was not taken care of. It died with the owner. And that happened for the wages of sin is death and the land died. Number two or three, number one being lazy, number two, death of the owner. No children to, to raise it up. Number three is he's had children and they grew up and told mom and dad we don't care we're going to go into the city 
and make a living. And I heard a couple years ago or, or, that the Amish, the Amish people, that's exactly what's happening to them. Their children are growing up and they're going to the, listen, in those little buggies, they got radios being played now. That would have killed their great-great-grandparents. Going after other things that's more important than family values. Going important more than the hard work. We're going to give up on God and his Bible because we're going to get AC. I'm not going to sweat the ground no more. And when you look up and you do the study of harvesting, and when they show you that these big tractor-like vehicles, all closed-in cab with GPS, computer-aided farming, and air-conditioned or heated cab, we're going to take the sweat out of the land. Uh, I ask you, way America wastes food. I work at a grocery store. One of my jobs is is to do garbage, which is garbage that you won't understand. But I have to bring it by the back door, and I walk into the back door last night, I, man. I had chicken on my mind already, and I, I smelled some great old chicken. I was like, hmm, that smells good. I already got chicken on my mind. And there in the garbage, three bags of garbage, rotisserie chicken that no one bought. Thrown in with the garbage. Not given to employees, not given to the homeless. Thrown into the garbage with the regular garbage. You think God's going to continue to bless this nation with the food that we throw out? What if God one day says, you know what? I'm not going to give you no more gasoline. That's it. Gasoline supply is cut off. Electricity supply is cut off. You try to go farm the way your great 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 grandparents did. You try without gasoline. People today, when you go on your Facebook, you got these games about farming, and they think that an apple tree produces apples in one hour. And you go and plant computerized com uh, uh, cucumbers, and six hours cucumbers will be back for you to pick. And I could bring my stuff over to the grain house, and the grain house in three hours will produce the grain. And nothing ever dies on my farm, and my farm never has any weeds. And I'll tell you something else that will kill. Number four, cement. You can go to Walmart and buy your clothes. You can go to Walmart and buy your food. But if electricity is cut off, you can't access your bank for your money. The stores have been looted and robbed. And, and, and robbed. You can't go to the parking lot of asphalt where Walmart is and you can't grow wheat in the parking lot the grocery store you've been visiting all your life when you walk into the grocery store and the, and the shelves are clean because of a drought what are you going to do Solomon says that this land is, is, is full of briars it's full of of, of thorns is full of weeds because the guy slept. America sleeps, she doesn't work. Welfare will destroy this country one day. When you feed people who do not work, and God says it's a violation. 
Will you imagine Solomon if he were to walk through some certain neighborhoods throughout America and sit there and stop and say, I went by the, 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 the ghetto, I went by this housing project, and all these people, they had big old fancy Cadillacs and fancy old cars, and they're playing their boombox, and they don't work for a living. And I go to the grocery store, I see their carriages are full of fat, delicious food. I went downtown and saw a veteran, homeless, struggling with, with an injury he got on the battlefield. What well, do you think Solomon were right? When I see the guy who's working for a living, who has a family, and he is struggling, to make ends meet. And he has been cut of his hours so everyone can have health care. And we've got to tax you of taxation upon taxation. What would Solomon write? And there were kings in the Bible. They had their garden. Even wicked Ahab went to Naboth and said, Listen, I want a garden of herbs. There were rules and regulations in the law, but you were not to go into your field and reap it totally. You were to leave it for the poor and for the homeless. If you came to a fig tree, you could sit down under that fig tree and have figs, but you can't put any in your bag. If you were to do that anywhere in America today, they would shoot you. Haul you off to prison. I live in Florida. You spend your whole life buying one particular brand of oranges. You come down to Florida to, to visit, to see that big fat rat, whatever you come down here to see, to retire, anything like that. And you see, wow, look at the orange orchards. Is that where the orange juice I drink comes from? And you grab one off the tree to say, I want a fresh, and they catch you, and they'll put you in jail. Well, we're a Christian nation, and the Bible says, hey, you can have a fruit. Just don't take any with you. Back where I come from in New England, uh, in Connecticut, you would see corn grow up. You see them plant. You see it grow. You see it harvest. And then they take every bit of it. Even the crows are out there trying to fight for a little piece of corn that's left behind. And then you waste it to put it into gasoline. Number five, I would say, and I don't know how to say this one. I don't know how to put a title to it, so let me let me jump you over to a country that has a false religion. And they're starving. And you see on the television these star oh look at this little thing, he's got flies all over his belly buttons popping out, and he doesn't have any food or any water for and you send for a price of a cup of coffee to support this guy in India. Excuse me. You wanna do the soundtrack again? What do you say what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? Oh, you feed this burr, little boy over here, burr, he's got flat, burr, he all kinds of things, are burr. There's plenty of food there, but they want to have a false religion outside the Bible and say that burr is grandpa. So we don't want to dig in and eat grandpa. 
if grandpa didn't get the essentials of, of, of focusing on self and finding oneself, and he gets to come back a million times as a different million different things that keep trying to success in life. That's, hey, you're starving because of religion. I don't know what the title of that one. We go around this country, oh, look at they're just starving. Because they're giving all their money to this big, fat, filthy church over in Rome. They're giving all their food around a certain holiday, uh, Halloween, to the dead people. To the graveyards, they bring the most best food so their loved one doesn't come back and haunt them all year long. And then number six, I lost count. Again, we're going to bring you to waste. And here's the ultimate waste. Yeah, we're in a county fair. Let's build a pumpkin shooting machine. Let's shoot watermelons and see how far we can shoot them. Let's take a whole bunch of pumpkins and carve them and put a candle in them. Let's take food that God has given us and use it and waste it for other things that are not intended for it to be used thereof. And let's take one day that this government has given to give thanks to God for the bounty of food of the harvest and let's change it to pigging out and football and Black Friday. Brown Thursday, thanks to one particular store. Let's make it. Let's, let's make the credit card bill come in one day earlier. You say well, you're really out stretching from thirty to thirty-four because that's the state we are in today. We're in a state of laziness. Solomon says laziness will not produce fruit. You know what America's trying to do right now? You know what we're doing in Iraq? You know what we're doing in Afghanistan? We're trying to Americanize the people. We're trying to give them a constitution. We're trying to give them democracy. Da, da, da. That's a big D for dummy. Because with democracy comes laziness. I'm going to pay you for as one person to doing the job of six, and we're going to give you unions and overpayment and holidays and stuff like that. And then there'll be a tired, lazy nation. You know, if, if you take the ox and leave him in the thing, in the barn, and keep feeding him, and keep feeding him, one day he's just going to be too fat and too tired to, to plow your field. And what if, to break the laws of God of sweating, by mechanical, electronical, what if God just says one day, that's it, no more gas, no more electricity? What if he takes those satellites that are above our head and just smacks them with a baseball back, back to the earth? What if he tells NASA, no more spaceships? What if your satellites and GPS, you know, no more uh, uh, ATMs and no more GPS systems? What are you going to do? There are people out there, wouldn't, if, if the government gave everyone a pack of seeds to grow, they would have no idea. And you can't say that America has not been warned. See, before the famine in Egypt's time, God sent Joseph in there. And God gave them seven years of plenty, over plenty. For the seven years of famine. 
Jesus in America looks around at the world and he sees his brothers starving. And he thinks it's never going to happen to him. And meanwhile, he keeps violating the Bible. See, where God says an abomination, he gave them over to their own lust. Uh, we allow them to be married now and to have equal status as a husband and wife, a, a, a man and a woman, for Medicare and, and, and other health issues where they get sexual VDs. Some of them are deadly. And now your insurance is going to pay for them. They didn't tell you that part. See, that's one of the, that's one of the things with the health care that's going around. Now you ha not only do you give them the right to marry, but now you got to give them health care for their VD. Everything was hunky dory until you allowed them to come out of the closet. Everything was fine. And then you got death. He has no he has no sons. He dies. And it's just too much for the woman. If she marries somebody else, well, He's going to have his field. She ain't going to ma marry no whippersnapper who's going to get, you know, who needs a land. Maybe the Doors will grow up and, and, and marry someone. But their father has a land portion for them. Ruth moved out of her house into Boaz's land. What happened to Ruth's father's house? Never to be heard of again. Sarah left her father. Rachel and Leah left their father. Rebecca left her father. To join a man who had a field from his father. And there were cases where the, the guy died off. There's a widow woman that came to Elijah. Elijah he said, Listen, I got debts. What do I do? I got young boys. Go get some pots of, and fill them with oil. You know the story. And go pay your debt. Sometimes the debt, the husband leaving. Would cause the land to be filled. Laziness, death. The children want something else other than what the father. I don't want to grow up like my parents. I want a life. I want an education. And look where we are today. They got the education, they got the science, and milk is more expensive than gasoline. And I think if you were to take that milk, open up the gallon of milk, and take a sample of that milk and put it under a microscope whatever, and discover how much of that actually came from a cow, I bet you it surprised you. Have you ever been reading today the ingredients in canned goods and box goods? And don't be fooled by the front of the label. Made with real potatoes. There has to be. And then you open it up and like, what the heck kind of potato is this thing? And then you read the back of it and, and you need a, you don't need Webster's Dictionary. You need a scientific dictionary. You can't even say the word. What the heck kind of field did this? Monogosy Waco Man. What the heck did that come from? Where is the artificial tree forest or arbor where artificial flavoring comes from? What garden do you get red dye number five? And where's four, where's one, two, three, four garden?
God does not have on this land somewhere imitation artificial gardens. Even the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was real. Man and his science has come up with an artificial environment. It's grown with scientific junk that is causing cancer. It is causing defects in the body. And it's making you go... It's not healthy. But the children has ran off to the city to, I got a job. And you also have high blood pressure. You got all these pills on your bedstead because you're not sweating like God told you to sweat. And when God made the body to sweat, that is your cleaning. That takes out the impurity. Sweating is your filter getting the junk out of you. But you're in the city breathing uh, car fumes. You're breathing uh, 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 someone's cigarette. You're breathing someone's bad breath. You're breathing someone's uh, flatulence. It's not what God intended you to breathe. There are places in America and there are places in China where they walk around with a dust mask over their head. To try to filter the air. God never intended that. If there's one thing you find from Genesis to Revelation, you find planting, harvesting. Listen, there's a law in the Bible that's taken from gardening, sowing and reaping. They'll even say, you know, when it comes to soul winning, have you, you know, bearing fruit? How much fruit do you have? And the Bible says the character of a person, are they saved or not? You should know them by their fruit. And then say, well, you shall know them by what you type out on a computer screen, or what you produce out of the factory. That's never God-ordained. Had you left this world alone, had that fruit never been taken and eaten, I, I would believe that God would have every family in a, in a garden field husbandry. There would be no factories. Because that's what God had the first man do. Even the priests in the Old Testament relied on you bringing the first animals of the tent. And the, the tenth of the fields. Even they lived by the sowing and reaping. God never said bring an automobile. God never said to bring you know, the cuckoo clock you made. Or the other junk you made. And then the Bible records that one of the prophets says, Why will you buy, I forget how it's, what you don't need. I mean, listen, come, food and water. Jesus said, be content with food and water. Paul says, be content with food and water. God will provide for you your food, water, and clothing. That is all our needs. We don't need smartphones. We don't need automobiles. We need to walk. We need to work. And we don't need the pills that have 5,000 side effects. Women would not have to have their breasts cut off if they would do the natural thing for the baby and not to flaunt it for men in magazines. If God would, if we would do what God planned for us, there would be no VD. It would be unheard of. You would be healthy, and there would be no obesity. There would be no fatness. 
There was no need for a, for a scale because you'd be working out in the fields. Even the girls and the women would have farm duties, which took a lot of work and care. And listen, the only thing you would have at the end of the day is to sit down in the living room with the family, have a Bible study time, and soon by the time that sun goes down, you're in bed sleeping. You wouldn't be down at the theater. You wouldn't be at the bar. You wouldn't be in sin. You'd be too tired. You won't be worried. There would be no colleges. You're too busy. And you'd be back with God. You'd be right to the dirt where you were made by God. The wife would be right by her husband like God took that rib out of Adam's side. There would be no ADD. There would be no drugs for children. Because listen, you, you whip them with, with a rod and you put them to hard work. And playing in toys wasn't a priority. We got women today who don't know even how to cook. Don't even know how to sew. I'll go down to I'll go down to the clothing store and buy a new dress rather than learn how to fix it. If the pil if, if it relied today to be the pilgrim and we were getting a ship and go to another country, we would die because there'd be no Walmart. Some people don't even know that when they buy meat in the store, it was alive one time. Children grow up, and they don't want what the family had. They have bigger and better ideas. And their bigger and better ideas causes more health concerns and makes them sicker. Then, religion steps in. And religion comes with us all its rules and, and regulations and and uh, especially the belief in uh, uh, reincarnation. Don't you fall for these things. Listen, if, if you want to support a child and you okay, you better study what, where that child is and you better study what is there. Why are they not eating? Well, the land has been filled with famine and drought for the last 40 years. In the Bible, famine and drought means it's, it's, a, it's a judgment upon God. What are they doing against God to make God angry? Why are there so many cows walking around? Meanwhile, they, they, they take their babies and they put it underneath this big elephant float that goes down the street for their god of the elephant. In other words, I'm telling you, they're, they're murdering their children. That's found in the Bible, and God's displeased with that. Well, they had this big tsunami. Do you know that they don't worship the god of the Bible? They worship their ancestors. Do you know what the sins of the nation is that you're going to support? But you won't support a Bible missionary that goes over and tells them about Jesus Christ? Everybody wants to be fed with food. A friend of mine in church, and we had one day down the street, one guy wanted us to give him cheeseburgers over the gospel. Work for it! We came from Groton, Connecticut. I'm using Groton as an illustration. From Groton, Connecticut, we came all the way down to Daytona Beach, Florida. I don't know how many miles that is. When we left 
Go out in Connecticut. I'm, I'm picking Groton. I grew up in New London and lived in Norwich. When I left Groton, Connecticut at Walmart, there was a guy out there with a sign asking for people for money. I come all the way down to Florida, Daytona Beach. I go to Daytona, and there's someone sitting there with a sign asking for money. And when somebody threw them five bucks, they, they complain and, and gripe because they had to bend over and pick it up. By the way, the one back in Groton, the newspapers caught their little scheme. It was a scheme. It was a religion. Make money without working. Laziness. There are people who give all they have to that one big church. That one big witch doctor. The book of Acts, uh, Simon the Sorcerer said he would use his magic. And he would put the people under his power. I've, w one of those powers would maybe give me your food. Maybe. I don't know. Let's see. If I had power. There was no word, uh, no word that they had this girl, she had the spirit of divination. They used her to be rich. Give me your food. We worship Diana in this city. Bring your food. And then you cannot grow food on concrete. America's got to break up her parking lots if she wants to survive. She needs to take her corn and give it to her people and not put it in the tank. She needs to stop plowing under her crops. She's got to stop wasting the food that God has given her. She's got to do 365 days of what the last Thursday in November I think the Bible said, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. I don't think that verse is just to be read on, on the last Thursday of November. I think that's a verse to be read every single day, 365, 366 bleak, bleak year days. And America wastes. Go to a buffet. I got ahead to my grandpa. He grew up in the Depression. You give that guy, we had we had those chicken drumsticks today and all that. You give my grandpa one of them chicken drumsticks, I'll tell you, you want, there wouldn't be enough for a dog to enjoy. You gave my grandpa a piece of steak and if it had a bone, he took the flavor out of the bone before he was done. He would even take the meat that was out of the little center of that, that, the, the round bone there. He'd take the meat out of that. Because he grew up in a time where everything you had to value They say in the 70s when they did an archaeological dig study into the dumps up in New York City, they found all this beef that was thrown out on the time that beef was short because they would sell all these parts of beef that people would buy and they didn't know how to cook it. They didn't know what to do with it. So they threw it out. We've got a, a cemetery uh, cement food. The food is deadly and we don't know where it came from because it didn't come from the ground. My wife are always saying to each other, the food that we eat today does not taste like it when we were children. And I imagine what, if you were to bring up our great-grandparents and have them taste it, what it would taste like. There's something, we used to have a family that brought eggs in the church back in the 
with something with fresh eggs you can you can't do that you can buy with eggs from the from the supermarket. I forget what it was now. But, but they were fresh eggs. You you couldn't do what you do it with star eggs. The diseases you're getting from the animals today, the food, because they're injecting them and they're feeding them all kinds of stuff that is not to be fed. Um, so. Doctor, I don't know what's wrong with Fifi. She's sick. You gotta give her this heart medication. Your, your Fifi needs an operation, needs a hip replacement. Why are dogs getting human ailments? Because you are feeding the table scraps. And Fifi's getting the same thing that the humans are getting. You'd be better to sit down with a bowl of kibble of Fifi and the whole family enjoy the dog food. Because if you feed Fifi wrong dog food, uh, the Humane Society will come after you. You feed Americans bad food and... The FDA says, hey, you know, it's okay. Cash check and money order. You better be paying attention to all the weather elements around the world, not just America. Why did a tornado strike? You better pay attention because most of our food is now imported. And the food that we grow in America, we send to our enemies that we are battling in war. What? What? We are angry with Russia because Russia is attacking, I forget who now, somebody, I don't even care. And you ask my family, for the last three weeks we saw Russian athletes Walking down the street of Daytona Beach, USA. I thought we were in war with them. Now, I don't mind because they got gospel tracts and they heard the Bible preach. But wait, 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 what's the contradiction here? How much crops is coming out of the ground to, to grow beer and, and gin and whiskey and all the other alcohol? How much crops is coming out of America, the Christian nation, to feed heathen and pagan nations that worship their gods? And how much of that do you waste? And I'm talking to myself too. I waste food. And then we turn around and we buy little candies. And they have a nice little shiny texture, and you're eating uh, lacquer. There are those, those Oriental news. I forget what my wife said. That with that, she won't eat them no more. The things that do, that do to your stuff. So there's a brand of potato chips she will not eat no more if I bought her. Because she read about what those things are, what's in that stuff. Most of our food is not coming out of the ground because we got lazy people. We got dead people. We've got, I don't want that no more. I want a career. I'm not going to give my baby nice nourishment for my body. No, my baby's a burden. We just read again today a death. Someone just left their newborn baby five years old, five days old. Just, to starve and die in, in, in a gutter drain. And you wondering why God has given women breast cancer, uterine cancer? The wages of sin is death. And then you got religion. I'm going to give it all to the pagan God. And then we're going to go to the Christians of the Bible and tell you, you don't want to feed us? You're cruel. 
You're supposed to feed it. You're supposed to take care of us, Christians. And with that, the most important thing you see, Solomon says in verse 31, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. And you know what happens when your stone wall breaks down? Anybody can get in. The foxes can get in. I understand it from the Bible. If foxes get into the vineyard, they don't have, and I, I'm, I don't understand this completely. I haven't studied it enough. But just by going up against the grapes, I believe, not eating them, but going up against them does something to, that it kills them. I guess. But there are a lot of animals out there that love, love the vineyards and Crows will come and eat the corn. I used to work third shift back home. I see all the deer. You can tell where someone's garden was because there they were. It was intended. There's a, we, my wife again, we're talking about, there's a, I forget, a tree or bush down here. I said, gee, wouldn't it be good to have a fresh one? And, and she said, she was talking to somebody who had it, and you had olives. You have to put a net over it so the birds, at a certain time, the birds won't come and eat it. Now, if you sleep and you say, oh, I'll wait till tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, the birds have eaten your olives. Now you ain't got no olives. You got a bare tree. Because you waited. One day, it's not if, it's when. America is going to reap what she sold about wasting food, about giving food to people who, who don't need it. About burning, and, and, and I mean, when I'm talking about burning and all that, I mean, you just take a whole bunch of pile of potatoes, and I've heard this from great men of preachers who travel. They'll take a pile of, of, of potatoes because it's too much and burn it. I'm told down in, in Pensacola Way, there are ships out there just loaded with, with food, wasted, rotting. And to America, that makes sense. To me, it doesn't. You can't have laziness. You can't have death. You can't have, I want something else. And you can't have religion in a country and expect your plate to be full and then you don't give God thanks. And that one day the, at the country said, this is a day dedicated to the Lord. And you think, you wonder how bad it is. For one week. And some of you are hard because you don't know how to cook. For one week. As you're waiting for that to cook on the microwave or on the stove top, whatever it is you're making, take that box or that can and try to read the ingredients for one week. And while you're doing that, do you think microwave is really healthy? Do you know what the origin of the microwave oven was? A guy was walking by the first microwave oven, not knowing, and a candy bar melted in his pocket. Now, you really think that's it. You really think the chemicals that you're eating when you read those, you think that's really good for you? I don't think they had to have colonoscopies and all that back in the early years. I don't think they had to have stents. And Grandpa would have a heart attack in a late age because his body just couldn't work no more. And he just settled down in his seat and helped take care of the grandchildren. And they, but he didn't work off the food. And they, he didn't work off the food because he wasn't sweating no more. And they, 
and, and then his arteries hardened and he died of a heart attack at a good old age. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And in America, when it comes to our food, every avenue, every street, every highway, every road, every boulevard, whatever you can name a road, we're doing it wrong. And we do it with a very simple prayer. Lord, thank you for this bounty. Oh, this tasted terrible. Ugh. Oh, man. How horrible. Thursday is Thanksgiving in America. And I want to have my truly honest heart. Will bow their head and thank the Lord. I had today I had the chicken I was craving. I was biting to the Lord and saying, mm, This is good. This tastes good, Lord. I thank you very much. And it's not even Thanksgiving. Say, Lord, you made chicken, you made him good. Thank you for chicken. You know, chicken used to be the poor man's meal. So my mom used to call it the poor man's meal. You had chicken all the time. It, was, it ain't cheap today. And for some strange reason, if you don't wash it, you can get some. Oh, well, where does these diseases come from? Why does you got to wash the thing? I mean, they wash your hands and wash your utensils. Where would that come from? I remember my dad, me and the dog... When I was little, we watched. We would eat raw hot dogs all day long. You can't do that today. I'm sorry we didn't get worms, but you know the health hazards of today. You gotta wash it. You gotta. Mm. Something's truly wrong with the ground in America, and it's it's disease. It's sin. Because America is against God. And there's broken down walls. And if you ever travel to New England, if you've never seen that, I've maybe Iowa stuff, places like that, I would assume too, maybe. But I know one in New England, or you go in places up north like that, small little towns, take a drive by, or ask somebody, say, I, I want to go see some stone. And there, there's a story behind those stone walls. Somebody built them. They were built for a reason. Solomon says again. And the stone walls thereof were broken down. Somebody built them for a reason. They were a pride and joy. Look at that wall. Probably the guy's sons helped him. Maybe mama helped him. Maybe the girls helped. And the girls came over Little Rock. But that wall was there with the it, it meant, hey, our family's here. Stay out. That stupid pig gets out and eats the corn. Got to build a fence. Keep the pig out. Whatever it was. And you go there today in 2014 and there's places misses falling down. Maybe fields of, of, of wheat or corn were planted and now they're just trees. Maybe a little girl's horse that she loved ran in it. Ran in it. I don't know. But I know one thing. It's not happening again. It's not being grown again. Nothing's being done to it. And as we move one less plot of ground to grow, and we put a blacktop over it, we put a shopping center over it, whatever we put over it, we are one more step of not being able to put food on our plates. 
And then one day, in order for people to get food, after the church is gone, you're going to have to receive a mark. And it says you're not going to buy or you're not going to sell unless you receive the mark. And if we receive that 